Uh, I'm about to start a new project this morning, uh, the cocktail table. Um, it's going to be filmed a little different than what I've done in the past. Uh, and I know I said that about the last video, but this one is going to be different. Um, the last video, the wave desk, taught me that um, videoing every little step really slows things down. And I like to get into the shop and just go through a project, the excitement gets going, and um, that's what I love. Uh, so this is going to be just the bare essentials. I'm not gonna show any work back at the table saw, the jointer, the CNC, unless it's unique. If it's unique, I will film it. And at times I will go into detail. Uh, I will give a timeline. There will be a reference. I'll say, well, I've just been back at the jointer and I did this, but I won't show it. So this video may not be for everyone. It's gonna be really heavy in CNC work uh, and the multi-router, those sort of things. Um, there will be um, a service to cut out templates or the parts themselves. I won't be doing, that will be Mark Sterner. Uh, he will be doing it at his shop in Indiana. Uh, but for me, I will be selling the DXF file. So if you have a CNC, this is your project. This is not the first run of the cocktail table. I made another version um, several years ago as a spec piece, then gave that to my daughter, Julia. Um, then a commission came in a few months ago, and as I am always or usually want to be, I got in and started tinkering with the design, thinking I can improve upon this. Uh, submitted that to the client, they accepted. So I've got the commission for two walnut tables and I'm building a spec piece out of Honduras mahogany. The uh, original uh, table, as you can see, uh, the legs came up and cradled the top. And the top was this unruly um, organic in sections thing going on. This table, the uh, top overhangs the legs, it's not cradled by the legs, and the top is a repeat pattern, eight sections, um, and it's, they're kind of curved sections and, and kind of organic within themselves in each section, but it's a repeat pattern. And what I also changed was this little inlay that I put on the legs right here. So, I'm excited to see this one standing in front of me. So I'm starting with the leg structure on this project. I have already cut out on the CNC the uh, mahogany legs. And in the drawing, the DXF, I've laid these out to cut out two at a time. Uh, you may have to um, accommodate whatever material you have and one at a time, four at a time, whatever. Uh, now, with the walnut uh, legs, I cut those out using a template and flush trimming. The reason being is I had such poor quality walnut, I had knots and sap and all sorts of things that I had to cut around and it just, I just found it much easier to do it kind of manually. Now, uh, when you cut out the legs on the CNC, you can route in for that uh, triangle inlay on only one face. You've got to turn it over and do the other side. And for that, I have a fixture. Well, let's come on over here and look down on my fixture and I'll explain it. I'm not sure if it's picked up in the uh, camera, but there's an outline of the leg on this fixture. You can see the dowels. The dowels are for registering the legs. I have one for right and one for left. And on, my, and on my machine, this corner right here, I have a little line here that tells me this is my registration corner. I have a pre-set um, pre up corner that I register pieces into. So I run that into the corner, put the pieces in, lining them up with the dowels, and clamp. 
so, um, and then route those out. Um, there is a DXF file for this fixture. Uh, but let's go back to the CNC and I will, I still have the walnut ones to route in the, uh, the inlay for. So I will just um, show uh, one set routing. So I've cut the mortises in the legs back at the multi-router. This is a working mortise, rails at the top. This is a working mortise, rails at the bottom. This is for the faux tenon, uh, and they need to be squared up. So come over here and I'll give you a quick look at how I do that. Uh, I like to use the Lee Valley square punch. Full disclosure here, I get royalties on these guys. This mortise is a little less than 3 8 wide, so I cannot use a 3 8 punch in there. I've got to use a 5 16 which means I'm, not gonna, I'm only going to get one corner, and this other corner over here is going to have a little nub that I'll come back and take out with a hand chisel. So, let's get started here. First of all, if you see the high point right here, uh, I'm going to go forward to that a little bit because when I pound on the punch, it's going to draw forward a little bit. And I, my goal here is to have these, all these mortise, or these openings the same size so I can um, uh, cut out all the uh, faux tenons exactly the same size, put them in and not have to fit them individually. So I've moved forward to that high point just a oh, um, 64th or so. And I've got the punch up against one wall, and I'm, there we are. We're squared up. A little awkward here. I'm trying to stay out of the view of the camera. Now, here's our little nub right here. I'm going to... Do that and come back in. Chisel is leaning up against this wall of the mortise and clean it out. There we have it. So we've got one more detail to do on the legs, one more machining operation, and that's to route a slot for a faux tenon that goes right here. Since it's on a curved surface, it's a little more difficult to do it on the multi-router or the panther router. So, to make life easy, I'm going to use a handheld router. And I'm going to come in from both sides to get the, um, to make sure it's dead center. But I need to mark out the limits. I want a consistent marking of the limits where I can route just the right spot and I can make all those uh, faux tenons up without having to individually fit them, or as little individual fitting as possible. So, come in here and I'll show you how I go about it. So this is a marking template that I cut out on the CNC. You can see I routed in little lines right here, that's the limit lines. This lines exactly up with the top of the leg. Flush here, flush here, flush all the way around, and as you can see, I can just come back and mark like that. That gives me a consistent marking on that uh, curved edge. So like I said, I'm going to make two passes, referencing off this face and then this face to get the thickness I want uh, and make sure that this detail is centered exactly on the leg. So, it's very important to go slow and creep up on those lines.
Let's turn him over. Do this again. Okay, we're repositioned to route off the other face. I want to creep up on that where these two routes finish evenly. I want a straight line there, not a jagged one where they do not meet. I want them to meet. So there's one last detail to attend to on the legs. Uh, there's ebony pegs that go right here down at the bottom. Um, now, I've got 12 legs to do. Doing one, you'll have four. I have a method that speeds up the process if you've got multiples in the same place. So um, let's start over at the drill press and I'll go through it. So I use the Lee Valley Square punches to um, get my holes for the ebony pegs. Full disclosure here, I get royalties on these guys. Um, the process with the punches is that you drill a hole first. Uh, this method is going to be something that you don't find on the Lee Valley site with the instructions. Uh, this is something I came up with. Anyway, uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start by drilling a hole that's a 32nd under the size of the given plug. So this is 7 sixteenths. We're going to drill a hole at 13 30 seconds. And we're going to go down about quarter, 5 sixteenths or so. So let's get started here. So you can see I've got the stop set up so the, the rest of them are easy to repeat. I don't have to mark every individual leg, the location. I've done that on just the first one and then the rest just relies on the stop. Let's go over to the bench. So we have our 13 30 seconds hole for the 7 16 punch. This is 21 64 This is normally the bit that would go in there in the, norm, in the usual way you would use the uh, punches. But this time, it's a little stub that I've cut off of a bit, and I'm sticking it in there as a reference point. And making sure you reference the square off this edge here. This one here is at an angle. And square it up. punched just enough to put the uh, imprint in there so you can come back and line it back up wiggle a little bit on the way down Stop shy of where the um, punch starts to flare out. Now, 2164 bit, the one that I said, like I said, that is normally used with this, we're going to just go back and do a cleanup. You can feel it bottom out. All we're doing is pulling out that crud that this guy cut away. And we should be good. There we go. There's a 5 16 plug that goes up here. Use the same method. Use the same math that we did to it. Get the uh, pin and the pre-drill and uh, do all the rest of them. So I said we were done uh, machining the legs. Not so. 
I had a bit of a brainstorm yesterday on my walk and have decided to change the way that I'm going to attach the top to the legs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a notch right at the top of the leg here and put a little piece of ebony in with an enlarged hole on either side and that will attach to the top and allow for, allow for uh, wood movement, that enlarged hole. So um, I will show you how I'm going to do it on the multi-router. There's a variety of ways to uh, uh, get that notch in there. So this is the bottom corner of the leg. Here's where three lines meet. These lines coming in here, this one coming in here, that's a high point. If this was left out into the elements, the elements would hit here first on this corner, that's a high point, and erode it and soften it. That's the look I'm after. What I like to do, a quarter sheet of uh, sandpaper, 220 grit, tri-fold it, and I'm going to grasp it with my fingers and back it up with my thumb. And I like to do this flopping motion. It gives me a lot of control. If you were to do this with 150, 120 grit, it would be hard to get that round over, that smoothing effect just right. Uh, it, would, it, it cuts too fast. Uh, sometimes I even go to 320 just to get a nice, even, smooth transition. Now, what I'm doing is pretty subtle. It's not uh, out there in your face type of thing. So let me get one done and I will place another leg up there next to it. Oops, that one's been done. I know that has not been done. Here we go. If we can see the difference there. Okay, here's another instance that I erode, soften a corner. It's right here, and it's not as pronounced as down at the leg uh, because this round shape right here kind of lessens the effect. So it's not quite as exposed, but I do like to pull this corner down right here anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. take too much. There we are. I think we have it. Let me grab one that is not done, if I can find one, and we'll give a comparison. There. <laughs> 